Lore, and this is Lit Happens, your celebration of the literary arts here in Saskatchewan. Today, I'm very pleased to welcome Mika LaFond. Now, Mika is a writer and educator. She teaches at the University of Saskatchewan and has recently published her first book of poems, Nipe Mo I have to do that again. <laughs> Sorry. And it's LaFond. It's LaFond, yeah. Okay. Oh, I may just need you to say it because I don't. Well, you could just, I you could, could just say my first book of poems, and then I can. And you can say it. Yeah, I would. We can do that. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> I I don't want to back out of trying, but I don't want to take seven times to get it right. <laughs> okay. It's the the clock is not back up though. Oh, whoops. I'm going to be a pain. Be a push the push, push, push the clock button. Okay. I'm Danica Lore, and this is Lit Happens, your celebration of the literary arts here in Saskatchewan. Today, I'm very pleased to welcome our guest, Mika LaFond. Now, Mika is a writer and educator. She teaches at the University of Saskatchewan and has recently published her first book of poetry. She's also been shortlisted for a Saskatchewan Book Award. Mika, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. So first off, can you tell us a, a little bit about your book? Um, okay, my first book um, is Nepewanin. It's a book of poetry and it's written in Cree and in English. It was my thesis project for my MFA uh, at the University of Saskatchewan. And uh, when I did the project proposal, I was a little bit ambitious and I thought this wouldn't be too hard to do, but, um, <laughs> well, it turns out that translating took a lot longer than I thought it would, but uh, writing the English, uh, I was mentored by Bill Robertson, who's a local author here in Saskatoon, and the translation process I did with my grandmother, Gladys Wapos Gray Eyes. And what a wonderful opportunity to work in, in such a special language with such a special person. So can you tell me a little bit about that? How did that grow your relationship working together on the translation of the poems? Oh, for sure. So my background in Cree, um, it, it all starts with my grandfather, my dad's father, so my musham. He was fluent in Cree and he only spoke Cree really at home but he passed away when I was about seven years old and then the language kind of stopped being spoken in the house. And so I could understand Cree when I was little and I, I don't remember speaking it, but I probably did if I said anything to my mushroom. And so um, then the only Cree I had was Cree in the classroom in, in Muskeg Lake School. So uh, Gladys Wapas Gray Eyes, she was actually my teacher, my Cree teacher all through school right up to grade nine. She taught me Cree. And then when I was starting my MFA project, I just, I mentioned to her that I was going to be writing a book and I wanted to translate it. She said, well, I'll help you. And so what it looked like was I would write, I wrote all the poems in English and then we started meeting and every time she, would, she doesn't live in the city, but every time she would come to the city, I would go and meet her at her hotel, wherever she was staying. And we would spend the evening going over the English poems and translating them. And what came out of the translating of the poems was that she would end up uh, telling me stories. And, and so I was getting more and more teachings from her about the like traditional spiritual teachings. and. Um, and then more poems would come out of that. And so the, the book is actually in three sections. So the first section is um, Achak, which means spirit. The middle section is Nia, which means me. And the last is land. So it's Aski. And the first section was, I wrote the first section, the Achak, as she was telling me the stories. The, the middle section about myself, it was, those were the poems where we started actually. So um, I learned a lot, a lot about the roots, the roots of the words, the meanings of the words, what doesn't translate into English and uh, what, what words in English there is no word in Cree for. Well, and, and it's lovely that in, often in the English translation, 
or in the English version, there are Cree words, and especially for, for people, which are, which are words that are words of love, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, one of, uh, uh, one of the poems, it's called, in English, it's called When I Die, and the title, when it translates over, it actually, it do doesn't uh, translate literally to die, it's more I'm passing on to the next stage. So I think, like, learning that was really cool for me about my language. Wonderful. Now, would you like to read a poem for sure. us? Sure, I'll read a poem. Uh, the poem I'm going to read is called Look in English, but I'm going to read it in Cree. Ita pe mitus namoya kostam tameskotit. Ispik ekesipuik wasquape pemituan. Mati sagebagau. Biesk nipia no quano. Otnam sakas del mina nepaya stel. Quequesca su mi kisika, taquakia well, mescochinacuno nipia, Oscascosiwawa, Osawawa, mina mi kusawawa, wewe pastano kayotek. Mitos wawa staikel, kakweskinakuaki nipia, peatek, wipapun, paketnam, mitosachikus namoya mitimnam, pinabago. Karapoa ke itame kawi takisipuel. Thank you. Now, did you always write poetry? Always, always wrote poetry. I've tried my hand at short stories, but poetry is where my heart's at. So. And, and your poetry is so sensory. There, you, you smell, you taste you feel what's going on it's you've really explored the world that that we that we live in with your poetry yeah and I think that that comes from um listening to I had the chance to listen to uh, the late Richard Wagami speak and he talked about you know going outside and just thinking okay what like just look at the grass feel the grass what do you feel look at the sky what is the sky doing and so uh, when I was writing my poems and and Bill was editing and he told me, okay, just like zoom in with your camera. Like that's what you want to do. So that's what I did when I was writing. I was really focusing on the, the details. Well, and it, it's such a gift to, to be able to, to translate those feelings and those visions and, and those visuals into words. You've, you've done a lovely job. And I'm, I'm so pleased that you were nominated for, for a Saskatchewan Book Award. And so do you have yeah. any comments about, about that? Um, no, I'm just really, like, I was really, really excited about it. And um, when they announced it, I was so happy that I could finally tell everyone because I, was, I had to keep it a secret for a while. And that's really hard for me to do. <laughs> well, it's... Um, are, are you working on, on more? Are you, do you have more, more? I am. I am working. I'm working with Gladys. She wants to write her life story. Wow. And so we've been working on that. She's, um, she's writing down notes. And we did some recording last summer. And then uh, I'm working on a chapbook. So, so more yeah. poems. More poems. More poems in the chapbook. Yeah. And I suppose if you've always written, it's not something that you, that you give up when you finally no. get something in a, in a hard copy. Yeah, no. I want to do more. Excellent. And your, your MFA now, it, that's a, a program that really brings writers together as people walk the journey as writers. Um, what, what do you, what's your comment about the writing community here in Saskatchewan? Um, well, I wasn't a part of it until I started my MFA. And um, the thing that I really loved about the MFA at the U of S was that it was such a, a small cohort that we, we worked with and we stayed together for two years and so we got really close and when we would workshop our work it was like we all kind of uh, had learned so much about each other that we could, we could discuss our strengths in writing and our weaknesses and, and um, we became really good friends along the way and, and Jeanette Lines is just unbelievable like she's a really a really good leader yeah and and the mentorship piece of the MFA that was 
it's definitely a highlight of it. Like, well, getting to work with a Saskatoon author was, it was a really good experience, and it really, it really helped me grow a lot with my writing. Well, I'm so I'm so happy for you. I'm so glad you took the time to talk to us today. And and uh, where can people find your book? Um, it's sold at McNally's here in Saskatoon, and then you can order it online from Thistledown Press. Excellent. So. Well, thank you so much for sharing the story of, of some of the poems, some of the background with us. Thank you for being okay. on the show. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me. I'm Danika Lore, and this is Lit Happens. You can find past episodes by going to Shaw TV Saskatoon on YouTube. You can find me on Facebook or Twitter, and you can contact me at DanikaLore at gmail.com. Thank you for watching. <laughs>